Positive Vibes, maybe. PV on the talk show. I'm your host, Dante Dash Smith. About to be joined by my partner in crime and the other host for this television show, Jetty A Track. As we present to you guys tonight, episode 226. Oh, yeah, we keep moving on up. We keep moving on up. We back in business tonight, and we're about to be joined by a very, very special guest. But before we get into all that, let's tell you, let's update you guys on what's been happening with PVM. So a few things have been changing and updating and happening within the last few weeks for everyone involved here at PVM. First, I start off with my partner in crime, my brother, uh, my co-host, Jetty A-Track. He got art for sale. You can actually catch his latest painting within my bro- our brother and executive producer, Kane's Zen Garden at Imperfect Art Gallery. Guys, make sure you actually stop off at Imperfect Art Gallery before before February 25th, which will be the official closing date for it. But uh, it allow you the opportunity to check out our brother's Zen Garden, which you had the chance to, you know, get, you know, more, more tranquility, more peace, more relaxation, you know, just honestly just playing within the sand, just enjoying the scenery, the artwork that's all presented there and whatnot. And also, you know, just supporting a, a good time. Uh, with myself personally, we have Fly Mouth Smoothies on deck. They're currently $5 per smoothie and then $5 for delivery. Also, you know, I'm going to be uh, contributing to Kang's Zen Garden on the 25th when I'll be supplying wings, you know, as a food complement to his art that's going on. And in fact, today's guest, we actually met with an imperfect arts gallery so you guys get the chance to meet her as well uh also make sure you guys subscribe to the youtube the facebook the twitter instagram and the patreon to stay updated with all things pvm we have a lot of things unfolding within this next year as well as cooking classes with myself art sessions with jetty um therapy stretching with chef as well as you know a little a little a little role game as well for for our smokers out there so you can you know enhance your abilities to roll so we, i see our special guest tiffany has joined from dave it's good fam i'm just waiting on jetty to join us and then tiffany i'm gonna bring you onto the show and then we can start up the conversation uh let me actually just post up tonight's topic and let me send a few requests out, and we'll have this show really going up today. So, today's topic. I'm just going to do, there we go. Ooh, there we go. I'm just going to put that, post that, send out a few requests, and then we'll be ready to go. Actually, Tiff, I'm actually going to send your invitation in right now. There we go. Also, you know, um, like we had last week off, guys, you know, and part, well, in large part because of the Eagles Super Bowl, you know. And although my guys didn't win, you know, it's still Fly Eagles Fly, and we still celebrating yeah. over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How you guys doing today? How you doing? I'm good. Jetty, this is Tiffany. Well, let me turn it up. That's Jetty. Okay. Nice how you doing? Tiff, I'm all right. I'm all right. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm all right. I'm all right. It's a beautiful Sunday. You know? Yes. The weather was particularly particularly um nice yeah. for yeah. February. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? <laughs> so, ain't no complaints on this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I uh, know it's been real good for February. I ain't had sweating in my scarf and hat earlier. I'm like, well, is it cold? Is it, right. is it warm? I don't know. For real. <laughs> this is this is pre summer right here. I, I'm not mad at it at all. No, I, I kind of hate when you know all the extra clothes and stuff. You know. You go into a store, you go inside, and it's hot. You know, you can't take off everything, and but you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
that's true. You know, like I did have a nice little winter lay. I'm not even gonna hold you guys. I, this is yeah, year, right. I super prepared for winter. <laughs> I had uh, scars, right? Jacket, my coat. boots, <laughs> my boots. It's all good. Y'all part of yeah, me in advance. Y'all like... part of me in advance. Um, I'm going to be. I'm still going to be present. I'm also working on a piece right now. I'm at the tail end for. It's the actually okay. the Eagles piece that I was working on before okay. we got to the. Really good. Thank oh my goodness. You. Thank you very much. That's... I appreciate it. So. Oh. I'm still present. I'm still going to be asking questions. I'm still going to be listening, but I'm also going to be painting as well. So just a heads up. Okay. Cool. No doubt. No doubt. That's actually work out perfectly. <laughs> you know. So, uh, so like I was saying, I actually met Tess through uh, Chef at the Zen Garden. Gallery. You know, Tiffany is the bartender there, you know, supplying them drinks, supplying the vibes and the aesthetics for the overall scenery there, you know, and um, once there, you know, like I got the chance to kind of have a conversation with her, kind of discover that she was more than just a bartender, also a singer and a songwriter as well, entrepreneur, you know, and just yeah. overall, just, just thorough lady, you know, so, you know, I wanted to bring her on the show, introduce her to the, uh, to everybody. And, you know, just give her the opportunity, you know, to spread her brand as well, you know. Uh, but but before we get to that, you know, like I do want to uh, shout out Jetty first. He has a painting up in Chef's Zen Gallery. I mean, Zen Garden uh, in Perfect Art Gallery. So, guys, if you haven't been to the art gallery yet, you have until February 25th. That's the final day to stop by, check out the art gallery, be present within the environment, enjoy the aesthetics. Uh, the last couple Saturdays, they've actually been having jam sessions, Saturday nights, that allow you guys, you know, to enjoy into some music, you drinks, the place is smoke friendly. So to all my smokers out there, you know, you have a place to unwind, relax, kick back, and really just enjoy yourself. And, you mm -hmm. know, just really just be at one with yourself, so. Yes, yes. And also, February 25th, the last day of the Pink Panda Zen Garden, PBM will be present on February 25th. So come out, show love to Kang, the executive producer of PBM, alongside the brilliant mind of so many other things that's happening inside and outside of Philly. Y'all get down and y'all come out there and see what it is. And, and come out and show this lovely young lady some love, too, that's been missing <laughs> and had that whole place turned up. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, actually, speaking of the 25th, you actually going to have Tiff serving them drinks and you're going to have me serving them wings there as well. Yeah. yeah. Go. It's yeah, going to be fun. Yeah, yeah that's definitely going to be fun. A little snacky snack. Nothing too much. Um, I already <laughs> talked to... Uh, King uh, the other day about, you know, did he has something in mind. Um, like, what was his favorite, you know, thing to drink? So I'm going to make a, um, a pink lemonade to go along with, like, his theme, you know, because it was, like, the pink panda. And I was like, well, since, you know, it's the last, you know, the closing reception for the art um, installation, how about just have something to just, you know, go along, you know, look a little cute or whatever. And he likes flowers, so I'm just like, luckily for me, I work at a place where, you know, we sell very pretty flowers, so I want to wait till, like, uh, maybe Thursday to pick my flower choice. You know, nice. so they can be fresh and ready, like a um, a garnish. So I'm just trying to figure out how to garnish that um, and safely garnish it as well. Like, it's not going to be edible. They do have edible flowers, but most of the uh, edible flowers they have are for, like, a baking or, like, a cake. And the ones that they have for, like, cocktails are, like, dried. So it's not really like super pretty, like you you know you see a bloom of a flower. So I'm like, oh, I'll freak it some way. So, yep, pink lemonade. Right yeah. on, right on, right on. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Y'all hear this? Y'all hear what's going on? Y'all, I come and get familiar and, and treat yourselves, you know? Right. And to compliment the pink lemonade, we're just gonna have flavor wings. So we're gonna have your hot and spicy, you know, of course your barbecue. Maybe a little jerk, you know, just to, you know, just to, just something. to give your taste buds a little treat, you know, a little something. something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, 
I'm I'm sad that I missed uh, this past weekend because I, you know, I told you a few days ago my sinuses kicked my butt Friday, so um, yeah, I missed out on some cool vibes. But I'll see all you guys, you know, this weekend. I'm better now. That's so, the downside of this weather, you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only downside that could catch you and make you sick, you know. But right. <laughs> Yeah, it's still good. You know, still we definitely missed you. You know, the bartender situation yeah. definitely wasn't the same. You know, but <laughs> you like <laughs> that's crazy because like, that well, just came out. <laughs> yeah, that um, you know, I've been going to the art gallery for about seven years now. You know, to hang out here and there. Uh, they have Friday uh, Roomba uh, every Friday night. And uh, now I see you guys are starting to do like the little jam sessions. It's like y'all had um, this past Saturday, which is really, really good. Um, that just came about, you know, I'm a bartender. Uh, that's uh, was one of my occupations and still is. Uh, been bartending for about 10 years now. Um, I started out serving food. I will never serve, serve food again, but I will make I you a drink. But, um, <laughs> but um, it's fun, you know. So basically, you know, all the things that I've learned over the past few years and, you know, especially after the pandemic where, you know, you take control of your own uh, future, your own income at that point, you know, it's endless possibilities, open door. So uh, if you're able to do it, you know, do it. You know, I just uh, got my uh, serve safe certificate because in order for me, you know, to start selling, um, like, certain beverages. It's not alcoholic beverages, but, you know, beverages. Uh, I have to, you know, get that done. So I got that about a week ago. Okay, congratulations. So, uh, now, <laughs> thank you. Now, you know, just basically filling out paperwork and just see how to go about it. So, I don't know, I just had an idea. I contacted Rocio, and I was like, hey, you know, can I come and just, like, serve some, you know, cocktails or whatever? And, yeah. You know, they allow me to do it. So, uh, you know, why not? And so I asked Femi. He had the little um, the little dance rock groove, groove vibe thing uh, a week or so ago. And, and it all worked. You know, I ran out of uh, juice, which was good. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, so that's a good thing. And, you know, I see that people enjoy it, you know. So I enjoy uh, I really didn't feel like I was working you know I felt like I was out enjoying myself and just making the money <laughs> that's good that's good <laughs> you know yeah so it's just you know the mad hustle um and just trying to you know not trying doing everything you know accordingly and correctly and legally so it's just a matter of time and paperwork at this point and putting things together and did you have any reservations about bartending, especially uh, post-pandemic or, you know, like as we kind of transition towards either the pandemic, you, you didn't have any nerves about, you know, maybe you um, might have diseases or, you know, coughing around you or even just, you know, exposing yourself to serving others? Uh, well, we took precautions, like the places that I was working, you know, after that, um, took precautions and actually that's when I really really started uh bartending because like I said I first started out as you know serving different restaurants um and then here I go I get to actually bartend which was something that I wanted to do and I can do so this gave me an opportunity and meeting people you know and just vibing that's, that's all and you know, I know what I like when I go out. So it's like basically, you know, being on the other end of a certain situation, you know what people want. You know, you know what people like, you know what they're going to enjoy. Because that's what I would get. I would pay for that or I would, you know, go to that to get that. So okay. that's kind of how I, you know, did that, flip that. <laughs> that makes sense. That yeah. Makes sense. So do you feel like um, part of bartending is, Partly being like uh, I want to be, I want to say like partly being a socialite to an extent, you know. Yeah, yeah, because you're basically. I mean, you're not trying to be anything, but the profession requires. If you, it if you, I mean, it's a requirement. It's a requirement if you want to 
to sell anything, if you want to get anything, you just have to kind of like be a little social butterfly. You know, I don't know everybody, but I know like faces. So when I do go places, it's like, oh, well, I know of so-and-so. Why? Because they came to the bar that I worked at and, you know, they sat for a little bit. And so I got um, just a natural, I guess, genuine, I don't know, exchange. But yeah, kind of like, like a socialite. And it's crazy because I'm an introvert naturally. But, you know, when it's time, time to do that, I, you know, dive into my extrovert. And when it's, you know, time, when it's done, I'm up, going home, you know. <laughs> so it's like, Dude. you know, a time and a place for everything, you know. I do. We have yeah. a comment by um, Von Brown. He asks a question. Do Does she feel sexualized or women should sexualize themselves? A lot of bartenders dress provocatively. Um, To answer your question, I actually worked in a club where, you know, it was more skin showed and i also just recently worked in a place where most of the women had t-shirts on you didn't really see anything besides the legs you know and i still kind of got the same treatment to be honest and that kind of like got on my nerves and i'm like i'm not even you know dressed a certain way mm. you know working at the club i knew i was going to get that type of attention so my mind is already programmed but i'm like dude i got on a t-shirt i'm not trying to be sexy but maybe he sees that i'm just a Nice looking female, and he's just gonna, I don't know, go for it or whatever. Mm, yeah, more times than not. Yeah. 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 And I'm just like, <laughs> it, it really doesn't matter. It didn't matter whether I had clothes on or not. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there's nothing I can do about it. And all depending on how a woman is shaped, she can't really hide but for so much of her shape. So, it's really nothing she can do about True. it. True. Yeah. You know. We're also talking about liquor, so you know. Yeah, yeah. and alcohol, yes. and so yeah, yeah. Be but that was also one of the reasons why I, you know, stopped working at my previous uh, job where I was, you know, a bartender for a, a local uh, brewery. Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm only going to have my back when it comes to situations like that, and you know, doing like the little bartending at the, the little vibe sessions and stuff like. I'm in control of that. You know, if someone is being disrespectful, hey, I'm not serving you. And, I, you know, I would do the same thing. Like, that was one of the things I like about being a bartender. You can, like, not serve someone. Right. You know? Right. So that's one of the things I like about bartending. Like, don't piss your bartender off. Don't piss your cook off. Like, that's just not. Yeah. Where's the live Yeah. yeah. Right. It's, it's smart business, you know. <laughs> you never want uh, to Oh, go ahead, Dash. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no. I, I was just about to say, you never want to piss off the people preparing your food no. and your drink. You know, that's, that's, right. That's just bad business overall. Never. Never. Yeah. Never. Yeah. Now, is safety, um, I, I, I hear that, uh, that you mentioned that, but is that like the biggest concern that you had when you entered this field of profession? And how uh you yes can, like maintain your safety overall like when you go to like different pop-ups and then uh events you know like how do you um one keep be mindful of like the people that surround you protect your energy your space but also are able to cut off people in different sceneries because you know like some places the security is equipped and there's some places it isn't too equipped to right of, so yeah. how are you able to, like, in those situations, still be like, you know what, let me cut this person off from drinking, you know, or, like, right. I see you reach right. your limit. In any given situation, yeah, I've had to cut a few people off, not a lot, and I've denied people, you know, service because they, I can see they was already intoxicated. So, I mean, it's a part of the job. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I would get in trouble if, you know, anything. But, yeah, some people's going to get pissed off regardless. I can't worry about that. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. So, you know, that person can always go somewhere else. And what, you know, whatever tip that that person didn't give, the next person is going to give double. So I don't worry about that one dollar when the next person may give me five or ten and they probably only got one drink. Okay, okay. Now, have you ever had a situation where you cut off a customer and they, like, either tried to... Um, wasn't responsive to the 
rejection or, you know, just try to still force their hand and try to still get a drink or still try to, you know, apply some aggression towards you? Oh, yeah. I have a um, funny story. Uh, no aggression. Well, no aggression, but, um, you know, the, it's a college nearby, uh, the brewery I used to work at. So, you know, the kids, they would come over. And, you know, I know what it's like. You want to drink. You're like 21, fresh out. And I denied her a drink. You know, she clearly she was busy intoxicated. I'm like, no, I'm not giving her a drink. So she goes over to the uh, the guys that's sitting at the bar and, like, you know, whispered, hey, can you buy me a drink? Okay. I guess. And so, so the guy's like, hey, um, can you get a, a a strawberry margarita for her? I said, no. And so, of course, she was upset because I guess she went back to her dorm and she called the brewery, I guess, telling on me. Yeah, I denied her because she was visibly intoxicated, period, yeah. point blank. So, well, yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, it happens. She <laughs> I grew up in an era where they used to be outside the the liquor store. You know, in fact, myself included. What? You know, yeah. we we'll come up to the old heads and you know, give them a couple of dollars. Hey, you know, this yeah, she can to me. <laughs> <Fine>. <laughs> <laughs> she can't me. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's good. I know she was frustrated. She heard it. What do you determine as a good drink? Like, how do you determine what is a good drink for a customer like is it a is it strong sweet spicy flavor like what what determines the perfect drink in your mind um most people from my experience they want a nice even drink even me like you know and a lot of people who are like um luscious uh you know they oh make the drink strong and uh i'm like all right but do you want to shot or you want a cocktail so that i understand strong because i want my drink strong too but most people they do request like you know natural blend or whatever not too much sweet not too much alcohol if they want it i mean hey you can get a shot on, on the side if you want <laughs> i can dig so i'm not going to deny you unless you drink too much too fast but yeah this is now what's some you know blended drink hmm? what's too much too fast like two, three. Well, I've had, I've had, I've had, I've had it happen, and I had to cut the guy off because I, you know, I said, well, what you're not going to do is you're not, I'm not going to sit here and allow you to drink this whole bottle of Crown Oil because okay. he, he was the only one <laughs> drinking it. Okay, okay, I understand now. Yeah, so it's like I, I'm, I, you know, I'll give it to you, but you know, legally, you know, because I also have um, a certificate for that as well. You know, bars, every bartender has to get that by their state that they live in. You know, to make sure you monitor because I'll get in trouble. I'll get fined. So I'll cut him off. He had too much. Okay. 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 So I ain't going to Oh, go ahead, Jed. <laughs> yeah, so, so speaking of just, just a blend of worlds because, you know, we've gotten a good glance and a good insight of you as a, as a mixologist, as a bartender. But, you know, you're also... You're also a singer as far as your artistry mm -hmm. branches itself out. So just to blend the worlds, you did mention something in the vein of, you know, your patrons enjoying an even me, quote unquote, right? Mm -hmm. But you personally enjoying a strong drink and listening to some of your songs, like the Tell Me record. I know that's, you know, like, my the, shit right there. like yeah. the music video that you also produce. Like it, you just have a real calm vibration of about your music and about your delivery but Thank the lyricism is not calm and by not calm i mean it's, <laughs> it's impactful yeah. you know what i mean yeah. it's impactful <laughs> like what what the message is is not holding anything back it's not holding any bars back it's not holding any you know what i'm saying so um if you could take the worlds of your being a bartender and your being a singer and you can blend the sciences together how would you how would you look at your your music and assess the way that you deliver it in terms of you mixing drinks like let's say for example like how dash introduced it and asked you know as far as your patrons are concerned you know strong or light you know what i mean as far as your music is mm -hmm. all of your music usually that that 
that calming vibration or do you sometimes like a nice strong jack or a nice strong whiskey with your music and you just like you know what we we going in straight meat you know what i mean no rocks no nothing right um actually you know what you guys can listen to that was like my safe zone and when i was going through like um getting singing um vocal lessons a few years back like my uh coach basically forced me to sing songs that were like uh, you know hit them hard mm. like okay you got that soft voice you know you use it in whatever you know whatever way shape or form but um challenge yourself because i was always scared to challenge myself so i i do want to you know change up you know i i look at what people are listening to who people follow and shit hell what i listen to so like you said so with the drinks and what people like, make it according to how they like, like it. And with the songs, you do have to kind of like, you know, reach those people. Like I'm, I'm a full grown woman now, so those songs. There's nothing wrong with those songs, but I'm in a totally different headspace now. Um, and it's been a while since I've written anything, you know, because I have other creative, you know, things I was I'm dabbling with. So that's understandable. Respect. Yeah, Respect. and and then even like you say, oh well, people like well, everybody don't like the same thing, but it's just like um, with the whole, whole like dress dress wise, like it's a time and a place where you know I'll wear a dress or show some skin. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I mean, hey, come on, if you got it, you got it. But then more often than not, you know, it's like not comparing myself, but it's just like you know, I guess people are expecting me to look a certain way. And that, that's a struggle and a challenge. I guess, you know, with men, it's different. Like, you know, guys, oh, we don't care what really the rapper or what the singer really looks like. But when it comes to a female vocalist, it's like, oh, well, what she look like? What she got? You know, that's, I, you know. That's a lie. Let me tell you that right now. Too. Yeah. Every man, every male, every guy who in the industry who says we don't care how the dude looks like, damn liar. Because a lot of how men move is emulated from how they see their favorite hip hop guys wear. There was mm -hmm. a whole time that cats were wearing all black because Jay-Z said, I'm gonna wear all black this year. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, like it's, we have, men tend to have a thing with their ego where, you know, it's easy to put the blame and it's easy to put a lot on the opposite gender and yeah. not take too much accountability on ourselves and shit. Nah, I, I can't, I can't, nope, 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 nope. Mm -mm, I can't let that one go. I know. Niggas but, is just as accountable. Yeah, but, but now, you know, I'm comfortable in my own skin. I don't struggle with that anymore. That's, you know, why you have, like, um, I don't know how far you guys have uh, did some research, but you may see periods of time where it was nothing you know, for a few years or whatever, mm -hmm. you know. And it wasn't because anybody was, like, trying to impose how they... Then again, yes, they did. But not, like, I guess in a way, they subliminally, yeah, you yeah. know. So it was just like, huh. And also, when you don't even know who you are, you can't really, you know. Mm -hmm. So... That's the, that's the interesting yeah. part about creating. You right. Know, um, that in the process of creating, you also figuring out who you are as a person. You know, you might have this idea and might be sure of who you thought you were in the right. process, figure out, you know, I'm not this person no more. You know, I've evolved right. or this changed or X, Y, Z, whatever the case may be. You know, exactly. please, please stop. Please, please stop me if this is just a bit too personal, but you just hit something that I am at absolutely interested in. I love transparent conversations when artists are looking for themselves, finding themselves, or even in a space where their true selves are about to blossom. And from the way it sounds right now, it seems that you are at that crux mm -hmm. where you're, you're about to reinvent or redefine or, you know, just blossom as the new you. So what are some challenges right now that you are experiencing as an artist that at first you weren't even aware of as challenges, but now you're more mindful of in your transformation and in your evolution. Mm 
who I was around, who I work with, who, who I thought I wanted to work with. And I actually look back on it. You know, sometimes some people may say, oh, well, this could have happened, that could have happened. And it's like, yes, it could have. But look back at the people who it would have happened with and look at you now. Oh, it would have turned out bad. Or, yeah. you know what I mean? Not so mm -hmm. good. So I'm grateful for not being able to have the opportunity, you know, People don't know certain opportunities, you know, and people always, I guess, try to measure your worth, I guess, about who you work with or what you have or whatever, ah, whatever. But I'm like, you know, I know for for surety, you know, that I'm kind of glad that I did not hop on that opportunity or go back to that studio, whatever, for whatever reason, because I'm not the same person that I was eight years ago. And, it, you know, it would be probably a bad look, you know, talk about investors or people that's actually looking for a particular individual or whatever. And it's like, oh, damn, he was with them, you know. Mm -hmm. so it, it really means the people. Everything else was like an inside job that I had to work on myself. But, yeah. <laughs> right on, right on, right on. I could definitely that. So what actually motivated and inspired you to want to be an artist and kind of express yourself through music? I didn't. It's funny because, like I said, here we go, an introvert always. Um, so I was a writer first. You know? Okay. So, so it's like to be vocal, I was scared to death because you have to come out. Mm -hmm. You're introvert. Mm -hmm. So that was one of my biggest, biggest struggles. But I found that Every time that I did, I would get a good response. You know, I look back over my life and it's like, wow, damn, like you work with that person or you sung background for that person. Not, nobody really huge, but I'm just, it's still a resume nonetheless. Yes. I, no need to name drop. That's a resume, period. Yes. Um, you know, I I was like, I don't want to be in art. I, I don't superstar. Pardon that that's not in my head, that's not in my dreams. You know, I don't fantasize about that. However, I do want to be creative. And so I started out writing, and then it's like, oh, well, you know, you have a good voice. You can sing. A lot of producers have uh, nice voices. They just produce. They don't sing. They're not, you know, this is a rapper. Or whatever. Um, so I was like, I learned that, you know, where the money was was in songwriting. So I was like, well, if I want to get any money because I didn't hear some horror stories from a lot of artists that I didn't grow up watching and you know seeing now and it's like oh this is horrible so I want the money so it's the money is in the right mm -hmm. all right cool and so I ended up writing my own stuff what better thing to do as a vocalist is to write your own stuff yes mm -hmm. so started out no one being a writer you know poems as a little girl they're writing growing up and then here you are writing songs so it's still a story you know nonetheless and just really learning how to use my experience and just turn it into a song yes so what's your favorite aspect about the songwriting process um like a what do I want to say favorite part about writing I get to really like be raw you know it's, it's no hiding it's I'm just it's just me and the paper and the pen or pencil or whatever I have or the laptop whatever um so it's just basically just being free it's freedom in that you know it's freedom in people you know some people speak some people write some people draw so it's freedom in expression so it's just another way of me expressing myself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I definitely like that. Yeah. Now, when, when you were, um, as you were like, you know, breaking out of your shell to an extent, you know, and allowing people to hear your voice and start sharing your words with them, what was the biggest hurdle for you as far as like getting your music out there and kind of like branching yourself out, what was the 
biggest hurdle as far as like uh, whether that was giving it to people or uh, trusting other people's experience. What was for you that biggest obstacle? Uh, it was a few. One of them was, you know, you come from being in the background to out in the front and it's like, uh, stage, stage fright. You know, everybody eyes on you. That freaked me out. Um, <laughs> Wait, you, you know. still get stage fright even though you no. drinks too? No. Actually, I thought about that uh, like a few weeks ago. No. No. Um, I actually enjoy it now. It's like it's nothing to be afraid of. You know, people are looking at you for a good reason. It ain't like they're frowning upon you or whatever. But, um, I mean, stage fright, I think a lot of art is just, I don't know, it's weird. Like I said, when you so used to being in the background and then you out front, it's like, oh, God, um, okay. <laughs> um, and at this point, like, all the other things that I struggle with, I no longer care about. You know, I kind of release those things, other people's opinions. Um, how I should look, how I should be. I'm comfortable in my own skin. Um, I mean, hey. I know, you, you. Yeah, yeah I, this, <laughs> this is the now me, yeah. All right. All right, so once again, blending the worlds of you being a bartender and you being a singer with the mix of or a garnish, as you put it, of your <laughs> introvert, of your introverted nature, you know, because the the first time I met you was at the the Pink Panda Zen Garden, that imperfect art gallery, and you were in the cut, you were in the tuck, you know what I mean? Like it would have easily been, it would have easily been a thing for somebody to walk past and not know what you were doing, except for the fact that you were so lit in that corner. People were going back and forth, <laughs> like, let me get this, let me get that, let me get this. So do you feel that the world of bartending works a bit to your advantage as far as, you know, you allowing to, to let your introverted nature flourish a bit more because people right. have to come to you for something as opposed to you being an artist where you have to be more, you know, outgoing and yeah. you have to, you know what I mean, step outside of that box? Mm hmm Yeah, and it is also helping me at the same time so here we go again you've been in the background all these years now look at you so he's like saying hello and hi how you doing what would you like you know you know what people yeah. Yeah. yeah right so it, it helps me too personally so it's like a benefit and it's something that's a must if you want people you know to follow you. oh i know that person you know some people see you one time they see you again oh yeah Definitely going. Why? Well, because they got, you know, little treats or whatever, you know? Yeah. Okay. Now, how, now I, I do want to stay right there and kind of like with the merging of the two words between your artistry and your bartender. And I, I want to talk about the aspect of like how you said with the customers and like as you create consistent customers. Are they like sharing their stories with you? Because in my experience, you know, the bartender typically becomes like a therapist for some people. Uh, you know, with uh, their, with their yeah. <laughs> yeah. They yeah, that, get their shit off. <laughs> it's heavy, man. I'll be like, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's funny. Like, I don't know. I want to say two as four, but it's like, you know, I'm a total stranger. But yeah, bartenders, are, you, you just lay it all on me. You know, you don't know me and tell me your personal business. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. You know, <laughs> you know. The stories they tell you somewhat affect like how you write your songs. Like, is there like some stories that you may like get from like a customer? You might be like, you know where I could add that into a song or I could create a story about that. Or I've had a similar experience where I could draw to to create from there is there any instances where that occurred oh especially about relationships okay okay uh, so. <laughs> um, i mean the amount of uh, especially the guy a few guys that i know bring all his dates there girlfriends that whatever it's just to see that you know you see everything behind the bar and it's just like wow you know if you were thinking 
thinking of getting into a relationship or anything. It's like, I don't know, like, you know, how discouraging, you know, what you see, you know, what you see can be so discouraging sometimes. Yet, I still believe that, you know, because I'm, I'm a person that still believes, so I know there's other people out there that believe just like I do, that, oh, you know what I mean? So it's just like, wow, like, damn, that's crazy to see that. And, you know, uh, I've seen... This is a reality check, you know? Like, yeah, like, like <laughs> I've seen, seen girls, I don't know if they were, like, dating or together. I've seen women just get up and leave. I'm like, well, what happened? What she got? <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know. Ooh, I, ha- I have a question. I have a burning question now. Thank you for this. Thank you, Dash. Thank you for that question. Thank you. I have a question now. <laughs> so between bartending and being an active artist and the politics that surround both of them, which one of these careers? make it harder for you to look at genuine relationships based upon what you know with what you see. Shit. <laughs> Not um, right. <laughs> I mean, damn. I mean, yeah, they both like... They, uh... <laughs> the, 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 scale, the scales are even on that one, but um, you know we don't all heard some scandal stories, and then you know I didn't see that. I'd be like, oh, okay, wow, damn. So, and I, I'm sure I was involved in both. Yes. you know I was yes. involved in both at sides. So I was like, okay, mm-hmm. absolutely. <laughs> My light went out. I got a charger, but it's okay. Whatever. Y'all still can see me. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Okay. Actually, staying on that same question, um, I actually want to give it kind of a flip to it. Which one um, of the two professions make it harder for you when you're out in public just to kind of remain, you know, more to yourself? Like, do you feel like when at the uh, bartender event, you know, more people feel like they can just approach you out in public, you know, more freely and be like, hey, Tip, how you doing? As opposed to, like, <laughs> just letting you be, you know, you get that reaction more so from your artistry. Here we go again. Uh, <laughs> because, you know, now I work, you know, somewhere else that's not too far from where I used to work. And people are like, well, what, you, you over here, you over here? Like, you know, so it's like they say hi, still want to have a conversation. They want to know what's going on. And I'm sure the same thing if I was, like, really out there beating the streets with my art. It, oh, well, what you want? What's the next song? Is it? So it's like it's the same. Maybe Dude. not an autograph when, you know, you know, bars. And I don't know. Some got a lot of famous bartenders out there. They go across the world. But um, it's the same, you know, you know approach. People get fanned out sometimes, especially if it's a popular place. And where I used to work, I used to work at a few popular places. So, no, no. Okay, so I'm sure you probably how you keep it moving in public, really. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I see you when I see you. It's all right. Mm -hmm. I I can definitely understand that. But, you know, from my experience of, you know, you know and I'm not uh, the biggest bar tender, I mean, bar, well, the bar attender type person, but, you know, in my experience attending bars, you know, I've always seen this uh, one instance kind of play out where a female bartender is constantly approached by men, you know, as yeah. she bartends. So I kind of wanted to get your experience on that and, like, have you, has that become like a difficulty of yours, you know, like trying to, you know, do your job, uh, but also have this guy that's like trying to flirt with you and be like, hey, sis, you know, like besides that drink, can I get your number, you know, and you may be pre preoccupied with trying to serve drinks and this guy is preoccupied right. with trying to flirt with you. How have you navigated those waters when they've been presented? Man, was that annoying. Especially when there was no security. <laughs> because it's like, I'm at work and 
I have to be professional. However, you know, you're getting my nerves, you're harassing me, you're doing it on purpose, you know, I'm behind a bar, and it's like, it's only so much that a person can actually allow, you know, regardless of where they are at that time. And it's like, I think that a lot of guys really did take advantage of the fact that I was behind the bar. Actually, one guy did say that shit. Um, so I was, you know, you know, with some creepy people out there. I'm not just going to say guys. There's some creepy people out there. Okay. And I don't want to get too deep into it, but yeah, I'm one of the people who frequent there. Yeah, they turned out to be a little stalkish, you know, and that's real deep. Like I said, especially when you don't have um, adequate security. And, uh, um, you know, I handle it on my own. I, um, I'm a small woman, but, you know, I'm legally able to take care of myself if I needed to. Uh, that's right. All right. <laughs> so. We'll support that. We'll support that. However, <laughs> at the same time, nobody wants to experience it. But yeah, I, yeah. Also, one of the reasons why, you know, I wanted to, to, you know, just stop bartending at someone else's business. You know, if I want to do this, I'm going to do this on my own terms and wherever I am. Not to say that there's not going to be any creeps there, but hey, I can, and, yeah. Yeah. To the best of your abilities. Really. Right. I could definitely do so, um, yeah, it it is like I I do think about that because um, who knows where this going to take off from? And it's not just you know you know Barton and I think it would be something that I just do like monthly. But I don't know if I talk to you what I'm doing. So I just want to just really like um, you know juice and pickles. That was something. Pickles was the first thing that I did during a pandemic, mm -hmm. um, and. Uh, you know, take them over to the gallery, they taste them, and they would have, like, little, um, same thing, you know, take their stuff over, people like them, people taste them, and I'm like, all right, I work at a place where all I have to do is fill out paperwork in order to get my things sold, you know, do the market, yeah, that's what I want to do, you know, I don't want to be in people's face all the time, even though I do enjoy it, but, you know, after a while, you know, for safety reasons, who knows? I don't know. In the groove line of safety, do you find that employing the use of false names or, um, you know, nomenclature that doesn't really belong to you, do you find that that helps or even more so, you know, with your, with your artist name, does that come as a result of wanting to, you know, to obscure your identity from the public? Of course. Of course. Um, actually, that's crazy um, that you asked me that because I want to start, you know, with legally changing things anyway, you know, besides marriage, if I ever get married, but I want to legally change my, for that reason, you know, um, yeah. So, yeah, it, it helps. It really does help because it's just like, you know, a separate identity. Every Everybody that we know, you know, when we really look into background that, that wasn't even a real name the whole time it sounds like it was but you know right or an artist name or you know something that's you know very creative out the you know out the box right. type of stuff right. so yeah right. definitely i think yeah not just for creative purposes but yeah you you have to separate yourself from your the self mm. you know you know, you're doing, yeah and it, it helps protect you a little bit <laughs> right on right on because, you know, I changed my, I don't know if you noticed, Dash, I changed my um, Instagram name, and I'm definitely going to create a page for uh, my uh, drinks and pickles and juice and stuff. I was just trying to come up with a creative freaking name. Ooh, you can bring thing. some ideas. Yeah, I was just like, Ugh. I know I have to do it before Saturday because I want people to just really, you know, stop. here we go again, separate, you know. Two worlds. Yeah. I can dig that. I can dig that. You know, that makes sense. You know what? I'm going to help you with that process. You know, I might yeah, have... I'm, might be like, <laughs> I'm going nuts over here, and I'm sitting there writing names and stuff down. I'm like, no, nah, that don't look right. Oh, that don't you know. <laughs> you your own worst enemy sometimes, no matter what you do. I don't like that. <laughs> it don't sound right. <laughs> don't look right. <laughs> Sometimes you just need a 
right. of the eyes and right. hands that see. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know. <laughs> Here we go again. Like, mm-hmm. Yeah, when I scroll on social media, like I click on something and I look at the person page, I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna follow them. So they separating yourself and yeah. <laughs> so we rounding up on an hour mark. Okay, before okay. Before we go, I do have one question and then we could kind of get into like our giving our last words for the show. Okay. But my final question for the evening is. Who is your biggest luscious as far as strength wise? Is it males or is it females who tend to come to you the most and spend the most on drinks and you know tend to spend occupy more time at the bar, you know, at different events in, in your experience? Well, the guys, okay, because they be drinking <laughs> and the guys again, again, because they be buying the women drinks. <laughs> <laughs> Sound about right. um, <laughs> yeah, we also had one last question from earlier so we just kind of as the conversation moved on i just want to save this towards the end and we actually got it from von brown he asked how are tips as a bartender oh the are tips were good actually, yeah, yeah. Are they actually yeah, because all, the, all the all depending or um, where you work what days you work, and <laughs> right, I'm like, God damn it, and then <laughs> we pay the light bill. Um, yeah, it really do depend, you know, tipping is just like, it's going to go like this all the time, no matter where you work now. If you work on LA Boulevard, maybe you make a couple thousand every night, I don't know, but yeah. Go with the flow. Right on, right on. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in for a new episode of PVM. Also, before we get up out of here, I want you guys to kind of give you guys uh, final goodbyes and everything. Also, Tip, I actually got to holler at you because uh, we talked a little bit about your singing and the, about you doing the jam session. And I holler mm-hmm. at Chev about that too. So we're going, I'm going to have to holler at you a little bit later. You know, like they was definitely interested. You know, and you participate in enjoying in the jam sessions as well. <laughs> I didn't know we could do filters on here. I would have did the whole interview with a filter on the whole night. Damn it! <laughs> I didn't oh, know. Shit. Oh shit! We lit, lit, lit. yeah. I have put yeah. a filter on. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> no. But before we get out of here. I just want to send a final reminder to everybody to come visit Imperfect Art Gallery between now and February 25th. 25th. February 25th, this upcoming Saturday, is the final showcase in this entity, in this form, at the Imperfect Art Gallery. Come check out Chevy Kang Zen Garden. It's an experience that you guys won't want to miss. We also have a painting by my brother Jetty up in there, the Zen Tears. You guys gonna want to see that magnificent piece of art as well. You guys gonna right. get drinks from Tiff. You know, definitely mm-hmm. gonna get them drinks. Get your get the vibration set up high for you guys. Gonna want to get these wings and things from me. Gonna have that on deck. So it's gonna be an experience for you guys. Come out this Saturday. It's a free event, but there also is a willing ten dollar donation. You know, mm-hmm. you guys can make a donation. You know, to the art gallery. That our gallery is a nonprofit organization, so please support. You know, you know, please support. Also, stay safe out here. Stay protected. It's been a lot of things in the news lately. Actually, uh, speaking of news, there was a cop just shot at Temple last night. Oh Damn, my god! This morning, you know. So let's let's keep that little let's let's keep that little maniac locked up as long as possible, please. And before we get out of here, guys, can you like let them know where they can find y'all? Any any upcoming events that, or projects that you guys have upcoming, or anything that you want to share? Um, so if we could start with you. Well, first and foremost, thanks for having me. It was a nice conversation. I appreciate you, um, you guys. Hope to come again. Oh, yeah, um, 
wake up on Saturday too. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can follow me on T dot Monique. That's T dot M O N I Q. No U, no E. Um, and you can come hang out with us uh, this Saturday, the twenty fifth, at Imperfect Art Gallery. Um, come check out some cool art and some. Tasty, tasty, and some good drinks. Daddy, how, mm -hmm. how about you? Oh, listen. Y'all can follow me at TVM Talk Show. Y'all know what it is. Follow the Patreon. Follow the YouTube. You know what I mean? That's how y'all get familiar with me. And anything else, y'all come and meet me out this Saturday, February 25th, at the Pink Pandas Zen Garden at Imperfect Art Gallery. And make sure y'all do yourselves a favor. Y'all don't do nothing else. Get y'all souls lit. Make sure that y'all spirits is right with a bit of spirits in your life from the lovely Miss Tiff. You did. Yes. <laughs> yes. And again, the Imperfect Art Gallery, the address for the location is 5539 Germantown Avenue in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Guys, stop through. I, I'm not even going to tell y'all the time because I'm not sure of the time it actually starts. Me either. Yeah. <laughs> But we are having posted within the stories <laughs> and on all the social sites once we have that time confirmed and you guys will know that, you know, um, like Jetty said, definitely come out. It's going to be an event like none other. You know, come get these delicious drinks. Come get this food. Come spend time dancing, celebrating, mingling. And it's smoke friendly. I can't emphasize that point again it is smoke friendly smoke so friendly. feel free feel free to bring your vices as long as it's not cocaine or heroin or nothing <laughs> crazy you know you guys are good like <laughs> for a good time but not that good of a time no 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 <laughs> no we're not trying to destroying our lives we're just having fun no no white ponies are be written that night yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Is he riding a white horse? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. This has been another episode of Positive Vibes, maybe PBM talk show. Like my brother said, make sure y'all like, follow, subscribe to everything PBM related. Stay up to date with the new shows new projects that we both have coming as well as our executive producer and you know until next week stay safe stay blessed up you know spend time with your loved ones enjoy your vices and you know remember each blessing is his own lesson yeah you know, love you. Good night. have a great night, night. Hey, Tiff. you too thank you once again thank you thank you for joining us Thanks for having me. Positive vibes, maybe.